Welcome to Mount Sinai Live. We stream smart healthcare information that's simple to understand so you can improve your health. I'm physical therapist, Dr. Jimmy McKay, and I'm your host. Today we're talking about sodium and your diet. Sodium, that's like a chemistry talk for salt. Audience, remember, if you have questions or comments during the live stream, feel free to drop them in the comments below on whatever platform you're watching from. To make sure you know more about how salt affects your diet is clinical nutrition coordinator, Marie Theogy. Marie, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Excited to learn more about sodium. I feel like we hear about it a lot. We need it, but how much is too much? We'll get to that. But first and foremost, Marie, when asked, what is sodium? How do you respond? Well, when um, a patient asks, what is sodium? I usually tell them that sodium is a mineral. And the sometime with the confusion is that we refer to um, sodium and salt interchangeably. So I break it down by saying sodium, salt has two minerals in it, sodium and chloride. So therefore, sodium is a part of salt, but it's not salt. You know, um, our body uses so sodium and it needs some amount of sodium to function. Um, we, uh, our body uses sodium to control our fluid, our blood pressure, and also to maintain normal nerve and normal uh, muscle function. Um, but the thing is, our body doesn't need that much sodium. It just needs a small amount. And if we eat too much sodium, that's not good for our health. All right. So you, 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 you tipped your hand a little bit right there. If we eat too much, it's not good for our health. So I'm going to follow up with this one. You know it's coming. How much sodium should you have each day? What is the good amount? How would you explain that? Yeah. So, you know, for, um, for, an, for adults, um, eating about less than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day is a part of a healthy dietary pattern. But children need less sodium. So, for example, children who are one to three, they may need less than 1,200 milligrams of sodium. And children who are nine to 13, they may need less than 1,800 milligrams of sodium. And I think that's important to mention because sometimes um, people um, are like, oh, I can't eat less sodium. I have children. They, they only like, um, you know, like chicken nuggets and pizza. But, you know, it's important for your children to um, not eat too much sodium as well. Okay, so now we know what sodium is. We know how much we should have per day. Where can I get sodium? What are the good common sources of sodium in our everyday diet? Sodium is found um, naturally in food, but most of the sodium that we're eating in our diet is getting from our diet comes from processed or restaurant foods. And I want to explain what processed food is because that term could sometimes be confusing. So processed food is anything that was canned, packaged, cooked, and then frozen, or something that is preserved. So the foods that tend to have the most sodium in our diet are deli meat, cured meats like ham, hot dogs, sausages. You know, one hot dog can have like as much as 550 milligrams of sodium. Um, pizza is also very high in sodium. A uh, slice of pizza can have 700 milligrams of sodium. Other common high sodium foods in our diet are like tacos and burritos, soup, sandwiches, and some of the savory snacks that we, you know, we enjoy so much like chips and pretzels, you know, and, and the, the tricky one is vegetables. Some canned vegetables are very high so in sodium. Um, half a cup of like a green beans in a can can have 300 milligrams of sodium. So we really have to be careful about what we're eating and where we're getting our food from. Okay. So if we have to be careful, why do we have to be careful? What health problems are linked to a high sodium diet? What should people be wary about? Yeah. Too much sodium can lead to like high blood pressure. And then high blood pressure can cause other health problems such as heart disease, stroke, and kidney disease. So that's why it's best to start watching and limiting the amount of sodium in your diet before you even get to, um, before you even have these conditions. All right. Well, Marie, if people are nodding along, they're listening to you here and they're saying, okay, okay, I want to do that. What are some practical steps that they could employ right now to help reduce sodium in their diet? What would you tell people? So if you if you notice that the foods that were listed um, previously 
um, pizza, deli meats, the high sodium foods, those are the foods that you are buying, cooking yourself. You're buying those food ready to eat in the store. So in order to reduce the amount of sodium in your diet, you really have to try to prepare your own meals um, or eat home cooked meals as often as possible. And the meals that you're eating, the foods you're eating should try to include minimally processed whole foods. And what I mean by that is, for example, like eating a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. And not just to reduce sodium, fresh fruits and vegetables have other um, um, benefits, such as they are great sources of antioxidant, vitamins, and minerals. And they also have a lot of fiber, which can help support a healthy, healthy gut. Um, and fiber also can help lower your rest, uh, your cholesterol, which protects your heart. Um, you So you basically want to eat fresh fruits and vegetables, and non-starchy vegetables are the best. Non-starchy vegetables uh, like green beans, cabbages, um, collard greens, because they are naturally low in sugar, and they can help support um, a healthy blood sugar level. And you also want to consider um, eating the right type of healthy fat. So healthy fats are like nuts, um, seeds, olive oil, avocado, and salmon. Those fats can help lower your cholesterol and triglyceride. So you, you, you want to think about adding those foods, ways to add those foods in your diet every day. So instead of having a deli sandwich for lunch, you may want to have like, uh, you choose a low sodium bread and have some almond butter on that instead. Or instead of buying hamburgers, have a homemade salmon burger for dinner and try cooking with olive oils instead of um, in, instead of like butter. So that's another way. And something I'm really a big fan of is trying to incorporate more plant-based protein in your diet. You know, all the foods I mentioned, they're all basically mostly plant-based and eating less meat reduces your risk of, you know, cholesterol, of high blood pressure, um, type 2 diabetes, heart disease. So incorporating those those meals in your diet or swapping things out instead of um, for Taco Tuesdays, for example, instead of using ground meat, maybe you want to use a firm uh, firm tofu that's been um, grounded up and that way everyone is eating healthy. Or if you're making pasta, instead of using the ground meat, use tempeh instead. Uh, so those are different ways you can incorporate um, naturally low sodium foods in your diet. Now, there are so foods that are very high in sodium, like mentioned, and there are condiments and, um, and seasoning. So you want to read the food label to make sure that you are not eating too much sodium, from, especially from condiments. Some brands, they, um, they make lower sodium version of the same food. So you want to read the food label. Um, high sodium is considered 140 milligrams per serving. So if you're reading the food label and it says 100 milligrams of sodium per serving um, or less, that's considered high sodium. And when you're reading the food label, you want to um, uh, reference what is the serving size and how many servings is in that container. So if uh, there is 10 serving in the container and there's 100 milligrams of sodium per serving, and you ate all that container, you're getting 1,000 milligrams of sodium. So you got to pay attention to that. I'm sorry. I was just taking a note real quick. Uh, food Taco Thursday is a new thing that we've got coming to town, right? That's what Marie says. Uh, <laughs> Marie Thijin, clinical nutrition coordinator. Thanks so much for the insight about sodium in our diet. We appreciate it. You can find us at Mount Sinai NYC on all major social platforms. This has been another Mount Sinai Live broadcast. We stream smart healthcare information that's simple to understand so you can improve your health. I'm physical therapist, Dr. Jimmy McKay. Thanks for watching.